Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. Once again, I'm Andy Michaud. Once again, that's Matt Hatfield. And once again, we've got football for you. Yeah, we've turned the calendar, Andy, from October to November, and that means the playoffs are just right around the corner. We start things off with a matchup that has major playoff implications. The Nansman River Warriors on the road, fresh off a convincing win at Kings Fork, taking on the Grassfield Grizzlies, who have had a nice bounce back season, 7-1 overall after last year's disappointing 4-6 and six finish. Well, let's get things started. Why not? Here we go. Opening quarter at Grassfield. Off the bat, it's Kyrie Landy. Landry goes down, down, and he finds Chris Henderson. 50-yard touchdown, and it's a quick lead. Nance Minerva, known for their running game, Andy, and now doing it through the air. David Coakley, the second-year head coach, has to like that, but they'll keep it on the ground this time. And look at the nifty running by Terrence Lambert, reading his blocks, using his vision there. 29 yards to Paydirt, and the Warriors lead by two scores. Still in the first quarter, and guess what? They're going to add to it here on Larry Goodman's three-yard touchdown run. Who saw this coming? The Grizzlies trailing by 21 at home on senior night, and there's still two minutes and a half to go in the first period. It's not over yet. Don't look away. Here's Lambert again, this time up the middle, and he's gone 67 yards. Holloway says, no, he's not gone yet. Not done yet, all the way to the five yard line. Caught from behind, but they just delayed the inevitable. Up the middle goes Javon Walker, the two yard touchdown run, it's 28 to nothing. And we're Still in the first quarter. What incredible speed by Holloway to catch him on that run there, yeah. but Nance River still pouring it on. This time you'll see Holloway's world-class speed yet again as he puts on the Jets, shakes a defender, and nobody's going to catch Whoa. him. Look how quick he is. So that, that's Olympic speed right there. That, that's better than Olympic speed. 28-7. Give him the gold medal. The problem is he needs help in this game. A field goal right here by Evan Lomax of the Warriors from 20 yards out increases their lead to 31-7. The Grizzlies would get closer on a racy Lucas kick return. However, they would be stopped inside the five and settle for a field goal. It'll be Cole Gibson from 23 yards out. So 31-10, it's now a field goal battle. <laughs> Exchanging field goals, 31-10 right now. And here's a kickoff. When we show you kickoffs. It's either really good or really bad. That's the motto. Well, this one, well, if you're a Grizzly fan, it's not really good for you. It's Marquise Boimer, 92-yard kickoff return, and they're not going to catch him. Touchdown. That's making special teams special right there for the Warriors. 38 to 10, second half now. Kyrie Landry with the quarterback sneak, diving into the end zone, 45 to 10. The Warriors have now scored 87 points in the last seven quarters. They're a juggernaut. <laughs> not quite done yet. Look. Trying to get something going for Grassfield is Shawan Goodman, 21-yard run. He gets to the outside, showing some pride here on their home field. Fourth quarter, ticks away. Are they going to score? Are they going to score? Rolling out his Big B. Big B throws, and they do score. Caught by Joey Manning, a 10-yard touchdown reception, and it's 45-18 on the comeback road. Great concentration, and the comeback would be short-lived here because the Warriors are going to rumble again for another long run. That is Terrence Lambert, the senior, going 59 yards untouched. He had 16 carries for 207 yards in this game, and the rushing game is not done because they're going to hand it off again to your midfield, and guess what the result is? Uh, it, it's not going to be good for Grassfield, is it? No, not at all. It's Raymond Goodman, another Goodman in this highlight. There's about three or four of them. He goes 51 yards to the house, and the Warriors run for 304 yards, cruising on the road to their second straight running clock victory as they improve on the year to 6-3. and three. Grassfield falling to 7-2. and two. Kyrie Landry completing seven of his nine passes for 131 yards, accounting for two scores. Holloway did have a touchdown run, but held to just one reception for 19 yards as the Warriors close out the regular season against Lakeland. Grassfield will visit Oscar Smith. A lot of points in that game. Otherwise, in the Southeastern District, less points here, closer game, but Oscar Smith over Kings Fort, 28-14. And you see the Tigers running their Southeastern District winning streak to 81 games. Sean Mitchell, 266 yards through the air, accounting for two scores. Deshaun Weathington rushing for 171 yards and two touchdowns. Also, congratulations to Weathington because he committed to play his college football at Towson this week. So, oh, there you go. kudos to Weathington, who will be playing in the CAA. We now move over to the Beach District. Andy, it's Bayside and Salem. Both teams coming off a loss a week ago. Salem unexpectedly to Lancetown. The Marlins, not so unexpectedly to Ocean Lakes, who's undefeated. <laughs> but both of these teams need this game to keep pace in the power ratings in the playoff chase. And this would be a close one. Here he's starting it off. Taylor Watson-Jones, a little screen pass. Jamiro Hudson in. Uh oh Chris Walker plows him. Well, that Bayside defense, though they've been scored on lately, they will hit you hard. John White's group 
showing the physicality there. Now Dante Lampley over the middle to Phil Patterson after this, actually that will be Chris Walker on the catch, setting up Dante Lampley scrolling to his right, and there is Phil there Patterson, the Virginia Tech commit. Got ahead of myself there, and Patterson was held without a catch last week against Ocean Lakes. They want to get him involved early in this one. Probably going to get some points early in this one. Austin Hampton, not enough to get in the end zone, but a 25-yard field goal gets him on the board, three to nothing. Salem's defense much tougher in the red zone with the return of junior linebacker Morris Vaughn, who was out the last time. And there you see another one of those linebackers, Cameron Butts with the sack of Lampley. And Salem trying to come back, but there's some more defense right there. That's Cameron Pitchford, and he drops Butts in the backfield. Malik Butts does not want to run to that big fellow too often because he will bring him down. That is a tough guy to run it against. And now it's a punt oh. by Viandre Reed, and uh-oh, not good. It's muffed, and the Sun Devils, those guys in red, will hop on it. Loose football, and the home fans are cheering. Now watch the shot here, the punt by Reed. High hang time, a lot of time to get down in coverage, and oh, that's when you got to call for a fair catch. Uh, oh, bang. I think if he had a do-over, he would have called for a fair catch that one. He would need it there. And then oh. Taraji Mitchell, another guy who's hitting like a heat-seeking missile, the sophomore linebacker, showing why he's one of the nation's top recruits in the class of 2018. This time it'll be a tough run by Devontae Williams. Look at him drag defenders as he moves forward for a gain of five. Some defense in this game. Here's another field goal beyond Ray Reed. Good. 35-yard field goal ties it up at three to three, and we got a defensive struggle going on here. Defensive struggle. This one is the real kicking battle, not the Nansman Grassfield variety near the end of the first half. And there is Devontae Williams on the direct snap, and you won't chase this young man and catch him. 43 yards for the touchdown, giving the Sun Devils a little bit of a cushion here. Extra point by Reed will be up and true. So Salem responding well from being stopped the first time. They now have a touchdown advantage. All right, Bayside trying to come back now. Lampley sets, fires over the middle. Good catch by Patterson down across midfield into Salem territory. Jameer Hudson, the defensive back, bringing him down right away on the catch. Now it's Lampley on the play fake, trying to roll away from that Salem pass rush, which has haunted him the last couple of years. And this time he does it effectively inside the three yard line, which will set up the freshman Michael Martinez. Martinez, quick inside handoff, keeps the legs driving and driving is he in. Is he in? No single yet. Bayside says, yes, he's in. Officials eventually say, yes, he's in, and he's got to get out. Okay, now he's out. He's in, and he's safe at the touchdown. And he's firing up the troops. See some underclassmen stepping up this game. The freshman like Martinez, the sophomore in Mitchell, and the junior in Devontae Williams. And here's Malik Butts showing off his ability to run the football there as he gets a game close to the 40-yard line. That Salem one-two punch of Butts and Williams is awful tough to contain. And this time it's Williams on the keeper. He fakes it, and he will be gone 37 yards to the house. And that's a big touchdown because it gives him the lead. It is now 17 to 10. Salem takes the lead in the third quarter. Still some time left though. Can they get anything going? Uh oh, that's not what they want to get going. They fumble it and it's picked up by Eric Melton for Bayside. And much need to take away for that Bayside defense. Once you think you got one of those guys stopped in Butts or Williams, the other one fires off here. Now inside fourth down, Caleb Brody is going to be brought down by John Tay Lewis. Former Ocean Lakes Dolphin making a stop on that Salem defensive line, and it is a crucial one for the Sun Devils who will run out the clock and get the victory, responding from last week's loss, 17 to 10. Williams rushing for 124 yards and two touchdowns, but supporting him with 94 yards, while Dante Lampley held to 135 yards passing in the loss for Bayside, their second straight defeat. That's a hard-hitting defensive battle, appropriate that it ended on a defensive stand. Both teams will be headed to the postseason, where we will find out in a week. But coming up next, we go out to Roanoke, Salem and Cave Spring. Don't go anywhere, you're watching the Cox Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. He's Andy Mishaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. We now go out to Willis Whitefield. Andy, to check in on the Salem Spartans. We saw the Salem team from Virginia Beach. How about the guys out near Roanoke taking on the Cave Spring Knights who have an upset on their minds in this River Ridge District battle. They're going to have to spring with an onside kick early. They just can't quite recover it and get that early momentum. Well, Salem's pretty good. They're even better when you give them a half field to work with. That just means Dante Claiborne only has half the yardage to pick up. Big pickup on that one, 31 yarder. And then it's going to go, this is going to be a pass. It's Beckley, and Beckley is going to the end zone, and he finds Vionte Tucker, 22 yarder on the ground and on the air for the other Salem, and they're up early. 
Coach McNamara's team showing the balance offensively, passing and running it, and then the ball is being tipped in the air as Jacob Knight will have to put it up more than he would like to against the Salem defense. They put you in third and long, and this time the pass will be completed for a pickup of 11 yards by Cameron Caldwell, and now Knight back to throw. Over the middle he goes, and that one is caught there by Charlie Ball. So a little bit of a rhythm now with that passing game across midfield. The question is, can you finish the drive? They do not. Well, I'll tell you what, who does finish the drive? It's Beckley, who, well, he's going to finish this play on his back because he got sacked by Jordan Stovall. So some defense going the other way, too, here for Cave Springs. Now let's see if they can get the offense. Knight, uh, uh oh, that's an interception. Knight to the wrong guy. That is Daniel Ponton with an interception. And Knight going to try it again later on. We'll see this Ramsey run up the middle. That's a good pickup. They're going to roll over the middle with the big guy. So many different dimensions on the ground for them. It's, um, it's going to be Ramsey again finishing off. They can go to Claiborne. They can go to Ramsey, even Riley Fox. And it's 13 nothing Salem showing off their versatility offensively now as they go back to throw Noah Beckley again. This time it'll be complete to Ramsey. And look at him rumble here. And Hurdle of Man Whoa. on his way past midfield. Ramsey will gallop 67 yards before he's brought down by a couple of Cave Spring defenders. You know, they list him as a fullback. That doesn't run like a fullback. This guy, well, that's not the running back. That's the quarterback. He kept it himself. Beckley on the keeper fooled everybody, including the cameraman. A 10 yard touchdown run. And it's 19 nothing. An efficient performance thus far for a settlement pass. Now it's going to be tipped in. Oh, almost intercepted. Uh, Dangerous. Push up. Push there. Up, drop it. You drop it. Get it. The push ups. Now it's Knight back to throw again, and this one will be high and uh oh, intercepted again by Ponton, and he's trying to get himself a pick six. Will be brought down inside the 15 yard line by that opportunistic Salem defense rising to the occasion. There's Ramsey. He's rising right through the middle for another touchdown. 13 yarder on that one, 26 nothing. They smell a running clock if they can get a defensive score here. Pressure by Ramsey and the ball will be tipped oh, and picked. Oh. There is Riley Fox making his presence felt on defense as when you're backed up inside your own area, you want to be extra careful with the football and that Salem defense will feast on you when you make a mistake. And here's the offense capitalizing back over the middle, although that time a big hit by Austin Reagan preventing a touchdown completion. Well, we don't need to pass it. We'll just hand it off to the big guy. He's going to hurdle. He just hurdles the goal line. That's a one-yard touchdown run again, Ramsey, and it's 33 to nothing. These guys must be used to doing hurdles on the track or something. <laughs> I don't know what, what they do there in their free time, but they see another run for Cave Spring going nowhere as Tyler Rice will be brought down immediately by a host of Spartan defenders. And here's Knight. It's not a good night for Knight because this is intercepted. It's picked off by Riley Fox. He wound up with more interceptions than completions. This one, a 41-yard interception return for the touchdown for Fox, and that would pretty much seal it. 40 to nothing, K Springs gets shut out. And Alex Rams rushing for three scores there. Jacob Knight just two of 14 through the air as the Knights get out game 291 to 58. Salem keeping their undefeated record intact. Meanwhile, in the River Ridge District, it was Blacksburg over Patrick Henry Roanoke. Isaac Johnson with four touchdown passes, 278 yards. Chris Betts sacking with Sean Coffey five times. Coffey with 193 yards and three total touchdowns. That's tough to do to sack that guy that many times. Lord Botatort, 17-14 over William Byrd. Noah Fletcher with a touchdown run. Tanner Hall with seven catches and a score as well. Larry Basham with a touchdown run at 99 yards for the Terriers who were held to 154 yards on just 33 plays from scrimmage. W.T. Woodson, 35-28 over West Springfield. What a job by the receivers in this one. Jack Caldwell with 14 catches, 196 yards and two touchdowns, the game winner, while Jacob Estes Hall's in 16 passes for 161 yards. Peter Musket throwing for 398 yards in that one. Meanwhile, in Conference 4, it was C.D. Hilton defeating River Bend 31 to 28 as Donovan Williams throws for three touchdowns and 281 yards. Jordan DeMarco passing for 260 yards in the loss for River Bend. Non-district matchup, Robinson over Broad Run 31 to 20. Roman Lowry running for 144 yards and a touchdown for the Rams, while Kyle Brickard throws for three, three touchdown passes, 193 yards as Broad Run suffers another defeat. They started the year out 6-0 for the season. When we return, we have more highlights, Andy, including Ocean Lakes taking on the Cox Falcons. Lake Taylor against Maury right here on Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. We come back east now. We head back to the beach, Lake Taylor and Maury. 
The Commodore's coming on a three-game winning streak. If they can extend it to four, it'll really be a big deal because Lake Taylor comes in undefeated on the year. And what about their winning streak? Oh, they've won 23 straight, the defending 4A state champions. But it's more with the great start here on the run by Markel Wood, getting them in the red zone. Oh, she views a beat, right? That's a little bit. <laughs> Shamar Perry, 25-yard field goal. Couldn't get it in the end zone, but they get it through the uprights, and it's a three to nothing lead. Maury on top early. I tell you what, if this lead holds, Chris Frazier will be spending the weekend at the beach on a vacation, because that will be something else. But uh, Dasmond Palmer, he has other ideas as the late Taylor star running back rumbles 49 yards, setting up the Titans where Daz Palmer can finish the job here with an 11-yard touchdown blunt. Did not get the extra point, though, so it's a 6-3 lead, kind of precarious. Hanging on there. What happens now? Oh, it's a fumble. And it's recovered by Rayshon Griffin. Last thing Maury needs to do is turn it over. They turn it over and Ty Creek Huey up the middle. Down to the one. Is he in? He's in. Is he? No, he's not in. They don't give it to him. They give it to Palmer. Palmer says, all right, I'll take it. Another touchdown for Daz Palmer. And it's now 12-3. His second touchdown of the night, and now it'll be Mori on the kick return trying to get themselves good field position. But uh oh, Lawrence Thacker pops the ball loose, and Rayshon Griffin will recover it. And you get those turnovers late to those, they smell blood in the water. And Dazmine Palmer is off to a fantastic start. Another touchdown, 23 yards. He's got three scores in less than seven minutes of play. He's on a record setting pace. Palmer leads 20 to 3 at this point. Here's Perry on the fake punt. The tip and it's caught. It pays off. Charles Ridley with the catch and they get a first down. Uh oh. Well, the first down doesn't work out for them though because the very next play, they throw an interception. Little throws an interception to Wayne Davis and then taking advantage of it is, well, once again, guess who? That's actually Huey this time. He takes it himself in a 19 yard touchdown run. And Lake Taylor 28 to 3, clicking on all cylinders now after a slow start for about a minute there. And uh-oh, there's a fumble. De uh, Deion Smith putting on the carpet and Ishmael Chetley recovering. However, Moore will give it right back. And Lake Taylor this time, though, will scoop and score. Diamante Tucker Dorsey, 29 yards. And this Lake Taylor defense under Hank Sawyer, it seems like every game they get at least one defensive touchdown. And they got one there, 36 to 3 at the break. Yeah, starting to pile up on Moore this time. Here's a little inside run. Oh, it's the option pitch out. Palmer. And he's just going to keep going. He takes off inside the red zone. Good security there. They try to swipe it away from him. Huey, a little screen pass to Davis. He shakes, makes, moves inside, keeps running, stretches, and gets it in. 31 yard touchdown off the screen pass to Davis. What a determined effort by the Ohio State committee who has three pick sixes on the year. Also doing work at receiver and always doing work running the football is Daz Palmer. He finds the end zone again on a 38 yard run as he continues to run for over 200 yards. I think he's had that three times in the last four games. Now a punt, a rare one for Lake Taylor, and it's going to be a touchdown for Maury. Look at Shamar Perry making some moves. Busting loose for a 70-yard score as Maury's special teams answering the call there. You know, Perry's got a field goal, he got a fake punt, and then get a, a punt return. Why not? Keep it rolling. Here's Markwell Wood. Grammy's not done yet. Up the middle, there's a touchdown for Wood. A 15-yard touchdown run, 50-16. But when you score on Lake Taylor, it makes them mad, really, really <laughs> mad. And running angry is Dazmeen Palmer, 63 yards. He wants to get the last say in this one. And the Titans find the end zone again. And when you score them twice, they want to score on you twice, 58 to 16. And this will be Tyreek Huey handing the football off to Jeremy Frazier as he gets some running room and runs with authority down inside the 10 yard line. Tyreek Huey will finish it off with the quarterback sneak and the Titans continue to hum offensively. Yeah, humming 64 to 16 is the final there. That's what you call humming offensively. Uh, Palmer averaging almost 20 yards per carry as he has five touchdowns on 12 attempts, 226 yards. Huey with three total touchdowns, while the Commodores' three-game winning streak is snapped. They fall to four and five before their regular season finale against Granby. We now go to the Beach District. It's the Ocean Lakes Dolphins undefeated, taking on the Cox Falcons, who saw their head coach get suspended this week, Bill Stachelski. He will not coach the rest of the season. Instead, it'll be Brad Nelson as the Falcons try to spring the upset against the Dolphins undefeated, and they face a familiar foe in Kalen LeBourne, who last year played for the Cox Falcons. As you see before the game, both teams will shake hands and show some sportsmanship there. And Kalen LeBourne, he is planning to have a big effort against his old team. 28 yards for the touchdown early on as the Dolphins score first. No surprise there. Yeah, not the time to have your coach suspended. Oh, not the time to be a quarterback. Jake Lowe gets hammered. Cole Johnson. 
And you see the JMU commit on his back. Very seldom does that happen for Cox. And this is something that does happen quite a bit. Taj Capert on the screen pass, 67 yards on the touchdown pass from Tyler DeSue as the Dolphins getting that passing game going. Capert following up his big effort against Bayside, 14-0 Ocean Lakes. But Cox will not be a team that throws in the towel as Matt DeMossi gets the screen pass, taking it past midfield. Once again, Johnson out of time, this time Dijon Askew. He makes a couple of good moves, 17 yard gain on that one. And now Cole Johnson will hand it off to DeMossi. He will finish it off with a five yard touchdown run. And Cox hanging tough under Coach Nelson, 14 yeah. 7 late in the first quarter. It's a team with a lot of pride and a very resilient group. And Cody Cunningham now, part of that twin quarterback combo with the run. And now it'll be Kill LeBourne running the football. Bourne runs it up the middle. It winds up in a 37-yard touchdown run, and they ran a whole lot more. Four more touchdowns, 28 more points. Final score, 49 to seven. Cox hung early, but just Ocean Lakes is just too much. DeSue completing 70% of his passes for 174 yards and two touchdown strikes. One to Tylen McElhaney, kind of LeBourne with three touchdown runs, while Cole Johnson completes 11 of 26 passes for 105 yards through the air. Mikel Franklin, 11 tackles to lead the defensive effort for Cox, which drops to six and three on the year. Ocean Lakes staying unbeaten, nine and zero overall. The Peninsula District, Woodside over Heritage, 43-29. Both quarterbacks were slinging it around. Tyler Tyler with 197 yards and two touchdown passes, also a touchdown run, while Jeremiah Boyd, only three of his 17 passes fell, 17 passes fell incomplete, 159 yards for him, two touchdowns to Amanye Watson, but Woodside moving its record to six and three on the campaign. In the Bay Rivers district, it's tab over Warhill in a tight one, 21-14. Warhill was trying to get their winning streak to three games, but tab wasn't having it as Nick Hunter ran for 89 yards and a touchdown. TJ Jones breaking off a 63 yard score while Colin Bright had 76 yards rushing, a touchdown catch before he left in the third quarter with an injury for the Lions. Player of the week is this time Kevin Marks, the Norview running back, 21 carries, 142 yards, four touchdowns, two catches for 40 yards and another touchdown. In a close game, Pilots take down Granby 36-22. Beating their Eastern District and Norfolk rival in a game that was deadlocked at 22. Marks accounting for all five touchdowns. He's also a basketball player for their school that made it to the 5A state championship last winter. And Norview closing out its season 7-2. One of only two teams in Hampton Roads, Andy, that played nine regular season games. They're one of them, Oscar Smith the other. Oscar Smith, of course, will finish up its regular season at home against Grassville. The playoffs are right around the corner. Can you feel it? Can you feel it coming? The air's getting cooler, leaves are falling. You know, it's coming. Almost time for Turkey Day, too. So we'll be back next week with more high school football highlights. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Hatfield. He's Andy Michaud right here on the Cox Sports Report.